Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the final of the ESL Community Cup. Now I'm Monkey Fist and I'm joined by M Flea. Flea, you there? Oh, rep, maybe. Now he is. Sorry, Flea, you there? How you going, <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to unmute you. I, I didn't realise I had muted you. I thought you had uh, muted yourself. But no. <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, Sala and Corviday, the squid and the bird, once again from last week, same line, uh, same teams. Any predictions? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back Corviday again. I think it's gonna be five two. Five um, two. 
Yeah, well, 5-2 this map. I think the map's overall going to be 2-0, though. Yeah, definitely. That's really the only way I can see it going as well. Like, Sala have... You know, they've been around for a long time, but the amount of roster change-ups, like, you know, Mort, Astos, and Scrivy have always been there, but, um, you know... Kings and Rizra has just recently picked up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, like, you know, I, I know Astos wasn't even one of their main players. He's just... Um, He's a sub. Yeah, I think so. And, like, you know, when, when yeah. they... when they Probably Sala was at their strongest when it was Tobo, Mort, Warden, Fletch, and uh, Scrivy. That would probably be the strongest solo lineup I can think of. However, Corvidae can put out any lineup, and you know it's going to be a very strong. Like, look, we got um, PD, Rock, Wildman, Fnatic, Lusty, any of those yeah. and players. The, the important thing is, is this is their main lineup, right? They're not running subs. Um, no Dilly. It's actually, yeah, <laughs> no, no Dilly, no Nico, and it's actually quite rare that they do throw in a five-man core, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, it, it, it is interesting to see that, yeah, as you as you pointed out, they can throw in their subs and there's no change to the team whatsoever. Definitely, and I just have to move around uh, the names. <laughs> just realised I had them yeah, on the wrong side. Yeah, they did that to me last game too, called <laughs> GIU swap. <laughs> on you guys. Yeah. <laughs> right, so... Armory Lockers archives picked up straight away, of course, by Corvidae here. Running defense yeah, first. Surprises. Yeah. And what do you think of this operator lineup? Anything interesting? Um, not really having a look at it. You know, Buck will be fairly standard. He'll go on, he'll go downstairs and try and make life as difficult as possible for the people um, above him. Um, Abana, Sledge. Well, the Sledge is probably the most interesting, but even that's not so meta, out meta. I suppose it's more of a counter pick to a castle, as we are seeing a bit of castle um, picked up on these kind of, uh, on border occasionally. Yeah. Um, especially when you're defending the, um, the workshop and ventilation room, castle becomes very, uh, very popular when you have to throw them upstairs with two other people and use castle them all. Definitely. So, the two teams we're discussing, <laughs> does lightning between have car insurance or love insurance? I, I say neither. I say, you know, I'm sure in the cars world, they have their own little insurance for cars and lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to see Rizraz peeking over here on Lusty. He's tagged him up a bit, but Wildman is also in here. And I think PD is watching this one. Oh, no, he's not. He's not watching this one at range, as I thought he was. We do have more coming in down below. And Rizraz is still trying to challenge these two players over here in security um, area. Does exchange a few shots, but it looks like um, Sola are really making sure to push downstairs. And Lusty is going to get tagged out for a lot of his health. <laughs> By more from below. Lucky he didn't get down just then. Yeah, well, you know, that's something, you know, I've known has been possible for a while. And more also takes down Wild as he tries to drop the hatch and escape. Like, putting your buck down here to clear the person who's playing that wild man spot is a good way to do that. Lusty is, however, getting picked up by Rock as he has rotated back to site. Mort's going to be throwing a smoke grenade. It was going to burn just an ADS system for a bit. And going to get team flashed. <laughs> team flash is the really good. Right, so we do have Rizraz on that back. Finally made his way into security. He needs to be careful of this wall. He saw a few shots have gone through it, but yeah, uh, he's uh, yeah, mate, just decided to open it all the way up. Yeah. So this is something we see a lot from teams, like they're trying to push from two different angles at the same time. And you know, we're gonna have Rizraz trying to sandwich the defenders, which is probably the right way to go about it. He's just yeah, well, they, they did blow that um, that Havana wrong. Um, as you can see there, it left the side of that horizontal thing, which will stop the plant. It means they will have to either crawl through it, um, they won't be able to crouch walk through it, they will have to crawl through it, or just go through the door next to it. Oh, and... Oh, and take they out the Havana. Yeah, they thought they would be able to do it, but um, unfortunately, <laughs> those last charges get shot off. It's 50 seconds to go, and we're in a 5-4 man advantage to Sala. Is this, like, you know, Sala could show up here. I'm not counting him out. Yeah, no, so you shouldn't count out Silla Strong. Very strong team. Um, however, that being said, this is probably the stiffest competition they've had um, all day. If, if you looked at the bracket, it was a very stacked bracket to the half that Corviday was on. Um, so, you know, GIU versus Eclipse in the very first game, and then moved on to Mother of War, and then moved on to Corviday. Like, that, that's a very stacked side just there. And then you have on the other side, you had uh, Silla and. Um, 
uh, Silver versus Vizard in the very first map, and that was it. All right, so we see um, a complete wipe here. No deaths on the side of um, Solo here, and you know we could be in for a shock here. Yeah, they um, they did very well there. That was a beautiful fall this round. Mm -hmm. And like I really like like their strategy was so well thought out. Right, we're going to clear these people out from uh, in the security room by going underneath. Lusty gets tagged up for heaps, and also you know Solo were all just hitting their shots as well. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, they, they had definite, very good showing in the first round. Now going 1-0 up, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can take this and fly with it. I, I might be a little bit biased here, but it'd be nice to see Corvidae... Defenders <laughs> Not win! <laughs> <laughs> well, GRU have won at once. <laughs> yeah, that's true. GRU did knock out Corvidae in a semis one. But I believe that was more due to the fact. That... Okay. <laughs> Castle's a zombie with those arms, but uh, I believe they were playing a man down essentially. Oh, I don't. I don't remember to be honest. Uh, why it was it was a very long ago that he assaulted. Uh, I think it was one of the first ones I participated in. I like. I like how Kings here is really glitching out with that castle. Five seconds to go. <laughs> what is he carrying? It almost looks like he's carrying like a bandit charge in his hand or barbed wire or something. He doesn't have any of it. <laughs> was that like a was that like a breach charge animation? I don't know. Anyway, here we go. We're into it now, and we're going to see PD running the iron sights glass. You know, which is becoming more and more common these days. Pushing from the uh, northeast side of the building with wild man over here as well. So it looks like we're going to see a uh, B site push instead of A. Yeah. And they're going to take the soft wall here. And uh, yeah, it does look like they're going to do a very heavy push onto B. It doesn't look like they're going to send anyone around the other side to make noise at all. So, what do, you, what do you think about this wall not being reinforced? Do you think it's a bit of a mistake, or what's, what's the plan here? From... Uh, no, not particularly. So, because uh, because they're not running one, anyone in offices, they plan on making the hold inside, um, they plan on making the fight in offices, right? So no one, no one from, uh, sorry, Mort is holding it, yep. um, in there. Uh, however, that's just one person. So as you can see, the bulk of them is, uh, are just behind there, and, uh, they'll be able to rotate and make the fight in offices. So it's not the worst strategy in the world. It's definitely not usual. Oh, what Kobe. A beautiful nade. Beautiful there by Wild, but Mort gets the frag reply, and Rizraz then gets another. So we're in a 4-3 advantage to Solo here, and yeah, they're going to be definitely showing up here already. Yeah, Mort taking down those Habana charges as well. That was beautiful reactions from him. He just saw them out of the corner of his eye. Mm -hmm. Lusty's going to push in, and Mort's got himself another one. It's a 4-2 advantage. PD and Fnatic... Uh, with it all to do here, and, well, you know, it's only early, but, um, this is looking very strong for Sola. It is. Uh, Sola are doing an absolute amazing job picking apart the attack out of Corvidae. Raz does jump in, or oh, PD does pick up Rizraz. Yep. Stoss trades it back, though, with a beautiful head job. And now it's all up to the Clutch Master Fnatic. Yeah, you should never count Fnatic out. This man knows he's done several before. So the Clutch is not just one man though, the Clutch is a team job. So he, he's going to be relying very heavily on the callouts and information from his uh, from his teammates. Definitely. Now, I just want to quickly ask you why there's a bit of a lull. Why do you think um, poor old Fnatic is always in these Clutch situations? Um, I think it's the role he plays. You know, he drones out for his team a lot. Um, he plays definitely more of a supportive role within the team. Uh, he does a lot of droning, he does a lot of camera work. Here you go again, just gonna drone out. And 15 seconds left, and he decides to drone. Like... Oh, he's just missed the head of Scrivy. He's just run up, gonna run out of ammo on uh, Astos there. He's taking him down, he's gonna start planting. But... Trade. Draw, round two, draw. You don't see that very often. No. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Alright, well.
So, Marcus T, I believe the owner of Sola. Just tell us how to pronounce it, please. <laughs> Just write it in the chat for us. It's Silla. It's Silla? It's Silla. Putting money on it? Yep. All right. Flea is going to cheer us 50 bits if uh, it's Silla. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but, we are now Twitch partnered. Yes, you can also uh, you can donate money to us um, as the stream manager. Funds go to me, and I divvy them out. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. <laughs> Into the back pocket. <laughs> as so far, we have um, pretty much. If you're going to be donating, we're not going to be doing anything with that money until there is something that you know the community could use that money for. For example, lands or Defenders prizes and competitions, etc. You know, we'll have to see. Did I load into this round really slowly? I'm not sure, but we got Wildman now with the same bug. Uh, running around with all that barbed wire. I'm like lagging hardcore or something, though. Really? Seems I don't, fine on my screen. I, I don't know, but like when we loaded into this round, we're all 37 seconds. Like we missed about the first 8 seconds of it or so. Uh, maybe you did. 5 seconds left. Alright, so yes, if you want to donate to the community, you can cheer us using uh, bits, so um, yeah, feel free to do so, of course, you know, we're not going to just pocket that money and, you know, try and profit off anyone in this community, all the money we get donated, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a beer right here for the casters, obviously, no, but all money will be going back into the community that is donated, um, I promise. <laughs> That's the only guarantee I'm given. <laughs> <laughs> it goes towards uh, Jeebus' mental health fund. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we do have more coming in downstairs fairly aggressively, and PD is over here. He's going to be supported by Rizraz. More that is, but PD is going to be coming back upstairs. And we do have Scrivy with a Montagna. Now, that's not something we saw last round. So, yeah, um, so they have made an interesting adaptation here. Even though what they did last time worked very well. Um, whether they're thinking that um, Corvidae were just going to choose a different bomb site or not, um, I'm not 100% certain, but it, you know, they have decided to make that adaptation for whatever reason. Yeah, so I'm just a tad confused. Now, uh, another thing just about the overtime is um, the draw. The overtime is going to be a bit messed up, so this could be a bit crazy. And we didn't see Kings over here last night, neither on Blackbeard. So, I'm guessing we're going to see a B push as well. And you can see them taken downstairs in this area. That's looking exactly like what we're going to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, even with it, even with the Monty, it looks like uh, they're going to do a very... Well, it was a close C4. It looks like they're going to... Ooh. Astos ready for that. Astos takes out PD as he tries to chase that Monty as Scrivy with the Diffuser is going to be walking into the site. No, he's dropped up first. Lusty's taken down Kings, however, and that's the Blackbeard gone. That could be a bit big as he was there, um, cover. Just have to be very careful of uh, gas canisters and C4s coming in. As Scrivy turns around, he's taken very low there by Lusty. Yeah, but they're turning around to check to see if Astos was still there. Uh, didn't need to happen. You can't no. just uh, you can't just do that with a quick check. Oh, you're still behind me, Astos. There we go. Wildman with a double spray down. He's gotten them both, but Rizraz and Mort both reply. It's into a 2v2. Rock's going to peek into Mort. Mort tries to no-scope him. However, Rock is taken out by the Claymore. Surely he saw that one. Oh, Astos was a beautiful place, Claymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was... That was all the way out in the open at the top of these stairs to stop someone from coming up the bottom yeah. of the stairs. He, he wasn't paying attention to it. He was more interested in around his corner um, as he came around. So he was probably scoped at the time, peeking in the corner, um, which meant that he didn't quite get it. And there we go. Rizraz getting that last kill as the timer started counting down. Fnatic once again left it to try and clutch it. And we've got a 3-1 lead here. Yeah. So with that draw... So does that, let's clarify something, does that count as a win to both teams? So no, like now... no, no, what it does is it, is it counts as, so pretty much a game is a best of, uh, what, a best of eight rounds, right? So first to five, right? Yeah. However, both teams are awarded a point, but it's only counted as one round played or something like that. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. a bit confusing, but um, if it does go to overtime, there's like no overtime or something like that, or it's like... um. 
you only need to win one round in overtime rather than two. Like, it's happened in ranked for me before as well. Or if you get a draw, it screws up the overtime. I, I must admit, I haven't really had a draw where, you know, it goes into overtime before, so... This will be, this will be a first for me if it does get there. But, and, you um, know, we, we can... making a case for themselves not being, uh, not going to overtime. We can probably, um... You know, rely on a uh, um, Corvidae to bring this one back if, if you know, if any team is going to come back from, uh, you know, a 3 1 lead against Silla, it's probably definitely going to be Corvidae. Yeah, I, um, I, I expect they'll bring out something soon. Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe Wildman, uh, the Wildman Ash pick. Ash Rush, you reckon? Yeah. May, we might see something, something like that would definitely catch Silla off guard, um, because as much as he's known, as much as he's known for it in casual, and uh, even in ranked, he, he does he doesn't do it in uh, competitive play. So if he pulls something like that out, uh, it, it could definitely catch Silla off guard. Alright, so going to see Rock cooking a grenade to. Oh, that's both his grenades gone, and this still isn't opened up. So him and Wild are just going to melee that open. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Teamwork. Right, so they now have access to this um, security room break room. And that's wasted a bit of time there for Corvidae and two grenades. So I think that um, pick on that castle was a very, uh, like, you know, worthwhile investment. Absolutely. The two grenades are the big thing there. So that, uh, that limits uh, Rock's utility something uh, chronic, and he's just now stuck to his uh, uh, to his skeleton key now. He's mm -hmm. used all his other gadgets. Yep, and here we go. PD's pushing from this B window, and we're not seeing such a heavy B presence coming out from Corvidae this time either. One thing I, I haven't seen in a long time, Shotgun Valkyrie? Yes, it's... Uh... What was that angle? In the back. Uh, GIU, um, Pringle pulled that out earlier today, actually. Against GIU, he picked up, uh, he basically, um, won before the round on him. Right, so Wild is taking down Astos, and PD's gonna fall, but we are gonna see this mirror wall, um, broken out, and we're in a 3v3. Riz, Raz, Moore, and Kings against Wild, Fnatic, and Lusty. I'd be feeling very uncomfortable if I was Riz, Raz right now. Oh, surely, he was saying, Fnatic's taken down Mort. And Wild's going to try and prone into sight. But we do have Fnatic run into the sight. And Rizraz misses all his shots. Wild finishes him off. And it's all up to Kings now on that castle. Lusty's trying to push from a different angle. And uh, the plant is also going down. Going to see Rizraz take out one. Can he deny the plant? No, he can't. But he's turned it into a 1v1. Switches up to his pistol. Could he clutch this one out? No, he cannot as Lusty gets that kill. Oh, that was a really good try from... Uh Rizraz there, he um, yeah, that was beautiful, he almost did it. He was very unlucky, I think he should have taken the time to reload his UM. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, Let, I, I feel like if he was playing just a tad more aggressive, like he surely he knew the plant was going down, he should have probably ran right over there rather than trying to scope around, because what's his yeah, fanatic... He did have to deal with Wildman though, if... Um, he did have to kill Wildman before he could even consider dealing with the plant. Um, I, that being said, I do agree with you. I think he should have been a bit more proactive in that measure. Um, but I don't think it would have potentially changed the outcome. Yeah, well, he got close and, you know, we can't uh, fault him for going that close. It's probably a lot better than I'd do, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and me as well, so yeah. <laughs> There's a reason we're not playing here right now. Alright, and um, we are seeing, uh, you know, top floor once again. Yeah, so interestingly enough, Corvette have not won a defensive round yet. Interestingly enough, <laughs> neither have Scylla. <laughs> yeah. they, they drew one, but... <laughs> yeah, that, that's true, actually. They did draw one. Apparently and draws don't lock out of... Uh, no, they don't. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, the more you know. Indeed, the more you know. Ten seconds remaining. Fnatic is going to take out the side of the mirror there. Uh, the front of the mirror. Yeah, give himself... give himself that little bit more vision. Yep. Works quite well as well, like... It's, it's a decent amount of extra vision. Yes. 
It, uh, it, it can definitely make a difference. Right, so... Shimming, we're going to see um, bottom control taken over fairly quickly. And we've got PD right by here, pulsing out more. He's going to see him st still. I think he might be getting aggressive in a second. Yes, he hasn't quite spotted Rizraz though, off to the side. Oh, oh. PD. He's, he's running the UMP, so he's not running the shotgun. Yeah, I think he missed his opportunity there. Yeah. I think he definitely should have gone. Um, oh. He is a very patient man. I didn't even know he could get up there. Holy crap. Wow, Rock's showing us his parkour skills. <laughs> On top of the TV in the corner. I usually I usually sit in... What? Uh. Apparently now it's a great spot for a person. <laughs> Mort has been spotted out once again here by PD. So it looks like Moore is, uh, oh, he's still on the balcony, but he's almost about to come inside. He's just wary of that, uh, mirror there. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Screws up one of those smoke grenades. He's going to be coming downstairs, and PD has remained undiscovered. This could be big for, uh, um, Corvidae here. It's always big when Romans remain undiscovered. It means that they feel very comfortable with their back. But in fact, the fact is not. It means they can pick up multiple kills here if they time it right. So wow, it is going to get spotted out here by Mort, but they're going to have a hard time getting him out of here. We're going to see the grenade get tossed up and over here by Astos. Yeah, I'm get... Kobe as well as uh, um, oh, beautiful C4. PD from below. Yep. There we go, and Rock's also taken down Kings. Mort's going to run right into the crosshair of Wildman, and this is looking very strong here for uh, Corviday. Rizraz has gotten one, however, and he's about to get taken out from a different flank by Rock, as we also have Astos and Wildman engaging. Astos PD kills Wildman, however, and Rock uh, PD's position, position is given away. It's all up to Astos against three. Surely he knows where PD is, thanks to Detected Outside, and he's turned it into a 1v2. Rock and Fnatic. Can Astos do it? Fish. Shot the wall. Yep. It's just like they're playing chicken, like who's going to peek first. He, he has to play a bit more aggressive as this time is running down. There's not much yeah. he can really do. He could... He's in his last 10 seconds now. So he's going to throw out a grenade and start planting. However, he stands up at the wrong... Uh, he ran out of time. Yeah, he ran out of time. As I said, they're playing a bit of chicken when he needs to just play a bit more aggressive. Yeah, I think I definitely think he should have finished the plant there. Um, ultimately, I don't think it would have changed the round at all. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it would have changed the round. However, uh, I definitely think he need to commit to that plan. He was totally out of time. Uh, there was two people left, so even if they just sent one at a time after him, he wasn't going to win the game. Yeah, they. Uh, he yeah. Totally. They. they... He, he, yeah. Sent just one. <laughs> if he does, just wait. <laughs> yeah, just wait. There's there's nothing else you can do about it. So I definitely think you needed to fully commit to the plan. Alright, so once again, we're going to see Armory lock his archives. However, next round, uh, it's going to be a different story as Corvidae are now going to be locked out of that top, floor, top floor bomb site. Yes, this is, that was the first defensive win we have seen uh, all game. So, uh... I'm actually wondering because a lot of a lot of um, a lot of attacks are going. Um, this map has a lot of uh, I see it a fair bit where defense just doesn't win around, and you see a lot of close games like this, especially with the teams that evenly match, where um, they end up, you know, at a uh, they end up at something like three three where no one has won armory lockers. So you sit there and think, why hasn't anyone made the adaptation yet? You're clearly losing. Why don't you try and change something up and do something a little bit different? And when are we going to see teams start to realize or start to think that maybe this isn't as good of a bomb site to defend as what everyone thinks it is? Or more over the point, everyone knows how to attack this bomb site. You're only making sense to me because, yes, I, I agree. I, I think if it's... I can understand why Sila or... Uh, sorry, Scylla, uh bit apprehensive to change it up like you know they drew one which they probably should have won it was a 2v1 or 3v1 or whatever it was that Fnatic managed to do yeah, 3v1. and um yeah the other one 
wasn't too bad. Was it? Was it wasn't another clutch, I think. Maybe not. Anyway, back into this round. We've got Lusty quickly maintaining control of this hallway and these stairs. Draining very aggressively. He's draining for himself, which is something you don't see a lot. Usually, pairs with their drone, especially the Roma Hunter that is uh, no, that is Lusty. But you know, I think Lusty's just going to hold down this corridor. That's all he's going to do, and he's just going to be checking, watching behind him as well. Or like that's what he's got his drone set up for, not to drone out for, from behind him. But we do have the armory wall opened up already. Astos is playing behind that half wall over there. And um, I have to be careful of someone playing in the offices as well. It's going to yeah. see 50 million grenades come in. <laughs> and uh, the smoke grenade's also going to come out to try and deny any push in there. And that's got a nice little spread on that one. That's a very nice spread. Um, normally you see the smokes don't spread anywhere near as much as that. Ooh, oh, close. This is the Kobe. Yeah. Let's see... Uh, this one might go, and it's down Astos. Yeah. However, no, no they don't know that. However, I think he's going to be very hard to revive. I think he's yeah. practically as good they're, as dead. They're not going to revive him, but maybe they can bait. Ooh, nice shot from Rizraz. Um, maybe they can bait the fact that he is still alive. You know. Well, it looks like he's advantage. he's trying to hide behind the smoke, and, and we're going to see from someone else out there. That's. Rizraz is going to move in that spot. Wildman has made his way aggressively in. He's going to be attempting to plant, and Lusty's taking down Rizraz. Kings has gotten himself two again, but Fnatic's traded it back. It's up to Mort. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> got something in my throat. And Mort is going to walk into the crosshair of Lusty here, and that is another round gone for Corvidae. Yes, so uh, Corvidae with a beautiful attack there. Um, the mind games almost worked. I think um, I think uh, Rizraz needed to just calm down a little bit in that half corner he tried to peek wildman very aggressively there he just needed to back he just needed to sit down they didn't know he was there uh he just needed to sit patient for a little bit and then pop up uh when they weren't expecting it i think he could have cleaned up two or three yep so just a quick check on the scores we got astos rizraz morton kings all doing some work but scrivy's lagging a bit behind however on corvidae we've also got rock lagging a little behind so teams are very evenly matched Yes, yeah, so this is a lot closer than I think a lot, pe a lot of people would have expected. Um, Corvid has just been so dominant for so long that if Scylla does manage to rise up to the level, it will be very good for the scene. Well, yeah, like, I I've always known Scylla. They, they can compete at that level. Like, I remember uh, CG final season four, I want to say. That was uh, Scylla versus, well, Maelstrom at that point. And it was only a 2-1 win in, in a best of three. Like They took um, one map off them, and I think that was the first map that they'd lost all, that uh, Maelstrom had lost all season. So, you know, that's just how dominant they are. <laughs> yeah, but it will force... If if Scylla does manage... Theoretically, if Scylla did manage to take this final off Corvidae, it would, it would force Corvidae to adapt, right? Because they haven't had to change anything in so long that... Um, They've just been so dominant for so long that they haven't needed to really think outside the box, right? And this comes down to that myth that they don't have strats because they're very loose. Um, and they rely a lot on their instincts and what happens in the game. But it means that it, they will have to maybe come up with something um, a little bit different if they do get picked off. And if tactically, if Scylla can may, uh, compete with Corvidae, Maybe Corvidae will have to um, make some adaptations and it will force an adaptation throughout the whole scene as people slowly pick it up. Definitely. So, we are on match point for Corvidae, however, but, you know, PD is taken down one, but Mort's traded back Wild Man. So, we're going to do a 4v4. Um, yeah, PD planned very aggressively. I think he ran outside for that kill under Astos. So that's Thatcher gone. Not too big of a issue but potentially could be um we have, well they do have a bandit so it depends on how they go if the bandit charges get down on the right walls uh it can stop a thermite or habana bridge or, or, or 
Right, so we do have Mort coming in fairly aggressively upstairs. However, Lusty has traded back Rizraz, and that's that Buck. Now, Buck is probably a bit of a big loss for this downstairs attack, as they cannot open up through the floor just as much. Yeah, and Ash is running smoke grenades as well, so they don't have this... Uh, they don't have... Now, the breaching charges do the same job, which is what you usually see. We see a, fr a few tags on the more up through the floor. 4v3 now, as the man advantage ha is in uh, favour of Corvidae now, on their match point. Now, what's Mort doing? It feels like he's just running around. Yeah, he seems a little lost, doesn't he? Yeah. Though, do have Sledge, so that's a bit of a saving grace for uh, Scylla here. Lusty's taken down Scrivy, however, and it's a 2v4 now. This is going to be a big ask here for the squids. Yeah, right. it doesn't look too good for them, and they have to pull out a, a near miracle at Ooh. this point. More almost sees Lusty, but I think Lusty's seen him as he just managed to escape those bullets heading his way. Enemy detected outside, and looks like Mort's going to be jumping in through the window. However, Kings has dropped the diffuser upstairs. It's all up to Mort with 30 seconds to go. Not much really he can do now. Yeah, but he does have to find four of them. Uh, this would be a very tall task, but we have seen crazier things happen. Crazier the things than four kills on Corvidae in 15 seconds. He's gotten one, but he cannot get the second one as Fnatic has taken him down. And there we go. We've got um, Corvidae taking that first map. Yep, so they take uh, they take border. Our next map's actually going to be on bank. Wait, better um, show the scoreboard first. Yep, yep, sorry. Keep going. Yep, so um, the next map's going to be on bank, uh, which is going to, which is special, actually. Um, Corvidae love bank uh, because it's a it's an exceptionally roam heavy map and it allows them to do some very crazy things like they um, one game I I versus Corvidae they've literally spent you know all five people roaming so uh, they they really do love bank um, it's their it's it's their pocket pick of a map um, you should pretty much be always banning uh, you should always be vetoing bank against them. Um, they are absolutely crazy, and uh, yeah, we'll, we will be seeing we will be seeing uh, PD's uh, Kavera on this map. It is something he absolutely loves, and he will uh, he will demolish the back line of any uh, of any force. All right. Can I stop playing in windowed mode? Thanks. No, Lusty. Sorry, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> they ask the same thing of me as well, sir. So. Why? I don't know. Well, mine was off center. That's why they wanted mine. Yeah, I saw that. How did that happen? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. That is, that was a tad strange. We're just waiting for Sala to ready up. I believe. I know Corvidae have said they are ready, but yeah, we are into. Yeah, Corvidae just want to get it over and done with. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me just update this. And they're already into bank we go. 1-0 lead in terms of maps to uh, Corvidae coming into this one. Yes. Um, again, uh, Corvidae getting bank map two is big because it pretty much guarantees a win for them here at this point, I think. Um, not a lot of teams have uh, strats prepared for bank and even fewer teams are actually decent at the map, right? It's a map that sort of falls by the wayside. Not people will like it mm. um but Corvid, they seem to love it and they jump on that hype train of everyone else being underprepared for it and they just smack people over the head with it so they are going to be very uh so i, I do expect this map to go very one-sidedly over the i wouldn't be surprised to see a 5-1 five, 5-1 one. Five, one? yeah now, um with that um five three on border i do you reckon solo uh silla were just putting all their eggs in the basket of let's take border borders out probably our best map or what maybe um to be honest i actually don't know what uh Scylla's best map is um we've seen them struggle with uh clubhouse um from time to time we've seen them struggle with um uh, we've seen them struggle with oregon every now and then not as much as clubhouse but uh sometimes they do struggle on oregon so maybe Border is their best map. The only other one would be Chalet, um, out of the normal, the you know the meta four see all the time. Um, 
But yeah, so maybe they did expect to take it and get off to the start. Alright, but um, you know, let's not make any judgments until we have seen uh, Sola's bank. Yes. This is, <laughs> yeah, I actually, I personally haven't seen them play as a team on bank. Um, so this could be very, very interesting. Alrighty, so we're going to see this PD, Caveira, going to get droned out fairly quickly. I'm not sure if Scrivy actually just saw him or not. Yeah, so one thing that Corvette do, and they do this on every... The reason why they love Bank so much is because of the amount of hatches in on the map. There is a lot of hatches in Bank, and anything that they don't intend to reinforce, they blow out. And so it means that uh, PD on this Caveira can just run around the map unhindered and undetected for so long. Because all he does is just keep running around the map. So yeah, he's probably... What he's going to do, I think, he's going to time it to when the drones have stopped draining that top floor and they've called it clear, and he's going to try and make his way back up there. Now, Astos hasn't spotted him out hiding in this corner, and I don't think he has been spotted at all. Yeah, so I don't think he was spotted top floor either. So they must be thinking he's on site, but surely they know that PD plays Kavira on this map. If you've done your homework, mm -hmm. well, I'll do a quick kill. Yep, he's over here supporting PD. PD is remaining hidden, wild man aggressive. And it could work out bad for either of, uh, for only the attackers and wild. What a nice shot! Flick. Nice flick out of wild, man. Definitely, definitely. Oh. And wild on a 2k here. Don't want to jinx anything, but what do you reckon, Ace? <laughs> I'd love to see a wild man, Ace. Chat would blow up. Well, that spoiled that. As lost, he's taken one down. However, Kings has traded him back. And it's a 4v2 now. Advantage over to Corvette. Yeah, as I said, they're very comfortable on this. Kings has taken out PD as well. Whether Rock's going to take out Scrivy. And it's all up to Kings, who's got all the kills for his team. So he's going to have to ace it now. <laughs> yep, so... Kings, getting an ace against Corvette is definitely something to write home about. Um... Will he be able to do it? Whoa! He's a, that's a third for him. It's just Rock and Wild, man. Diffuser is all the way upstairs, however, and he's about to run into Rock. No, he turns around and changes his angle. 30 seconds to go. Rock and Wild are both in this uh, locker's uh, bomb site here. And he's going to get smoked out by the smoke. Yeah, he needs to make a move at this point. Um, and he needs to push through both of them, if he wants to. The, uh, to the CCTV side. There we go. Wild's going to finish him off. So, Wild and Kings both get a 3k. However, Wild's teammates are supporting him a bit more. And uh, Corvade take that round. Yeah, so right there, we saw, out of their roamers, we saw the comfortability in their uh, in-bank for Corvade. They started that round off so well. You know, their roamers did exceptional work in clearing out... Um, in clearing out some of the team before they did eventually go down. But most of the time, your roam will go down in a game because, you know, that's essentially the roam's job. That there's a delay time. But I, um, yeah, but their comfortability on the map allowed them to call each other and know exactly where they attack from, where they were going to be, and what they were going to do. All right, so we are seeing Mort pick up his own Caveira. Yeah, so this is something that Mort has been playing a lot of Defenders, protect your bombs from uh, because no one plays ranked anymore. But, um, which guys can we see? Please start playing ranked a bit more. <laughs> Everyone get on it. It'll shorten the queue time, I promise. Yep. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he, he has been playing it a ton in casual. Um, I've seen him practicing it a lot. Whether it's as good as PD's at the moment is yet to be seen, um, as I think this is the first time he's played it in a competitive setting. So, yeah, I know he likes to play it on that clubhouse as well, Caveira. Yeah, where he gets the cross between bedroom and uh, cash. Yeah. Four shots for AR. Cash, that's rough. Yeah. He just doesn't have them skills that uh, PD has, apparently. <laughs> them shotgun skills. Alright, and uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's struggling to get a camera. <laughs> I think he's happy with that. <laughs> Just have to check if he got it. Uh, 
Because it doesn't give you the points. It doesn't show up. Yeah. <laughs> and so PD is going to be coming in um, on his drone. He's going to see Scrivy is behind that little server rack thingamabob. And he's got barbed wire to deal with. So if he's going to um, make his way in there, he's going to be at a severe disadvantage. And I would be surprised if he manages to do so successfully. Yeah, I do think he's uh, he's going to have to hold the angle, I think. Um, and just hold the angle in servers and wait for Scrivy to show himself. Um, of course. I don't think he can get much more aggressive than that because of the fire. If he does, he'll just get messed up when Scrivy picks him. He does have those smoke grenades as well, so that could work to his advantage. Scrivy not able to hit that drone, unfortunately, for him. Oh, that was a nice angle from Kings. Oh, yeah, that's, that's an old one. Yeah, yeah, behind the bomb. That's yeah, that's a very nice angle, and it can absolutely it can absolutely halt a uh, a B site push. Definitely, and we do have more. It seems like he's been undiscovered. However, here we go. More takes down Fnatic, and Rizraz has traded back wild. So there we go, five three advantage. Even though Astos has been tagged low. Lusty's traded back more. However, that's that Caveira off the board. No interrogation coming out this time. PD is going to smoke up for his first uh, smoke grenade, hoping that um, Scrivy is probably going to peek. Yeah. So Rizraz, though, coming around. PD does back out wisely. He heard Rizraz and just backed out. He's getting smoked, though. Mm, smoke grenade is going to push him back. Scrivy cannot resist himself. Goes for a peek, but PD is just a tad slow there. Oh, unfortunate for him. Yeah, those reaction times matter. He does try to crawl through. He needs to deal with this wire. 45 seconds left. He either needs to crawl through this wire or smack it out at this point. He does get smoked out. I think this would be a dead glass. There we go. Yeah. Rizraz has taken him down. And it's up to Rock and Lusty. Both pushing from the west-hand side of the map. Going to be dropping this dropper behind Tellers. But surely that uh, Thermite charge is going to give away their position. Rock's going to yeah, try and... Yeah, they would have heard it. They wouldn't know what's happening. Now they know what's happening. Going to smoke and drop Terrace Hunt style. And he's taken down by Rizraz. And now it's up to Lusty. Solo. He's going to run in, take down one. However, he cannot 180 fast enough as Kings has finished him off. And there we go. It's a 1-1 one, one, uh, tied game. Yep. So that was uh, that was some beautiful crossfire out of uh, Scylla there in the last minutes. When you do outnumber your... Or you know uh, exactly where someone is and how many of them are, you create crossfires for them. So you can divert resources to a certain point around the map, yep. uh, with resources being your players, obviously, and you create those crossfires. And so when they come out, you they can't kill everyone, and you essentially, at the worst, you trade one for one, right? Which will always favor the defenders, um, or generally favor the defenders. So, um, you know, and that was a beautiful, that was beautiful cross, uh, crossfires created out of Scylla. You had two people that dropped down. So when... Um, when Thermite dropped down the hatch there, he got shot from two different directions. He smoked one, but the second one cleaned him up. And then when Lusty came down, he had to deal with two people, and you saw they traded one for one. If, if they're going to drop a hatch, don't you reckon it'll probably be smarter to try and both drop at the same time and try and get that trade at the very, like, you know, the very least? Uh, yes, no, they didn't, the, the issue was is that um, Corvette didn't know where anyone from um, Scylla was. Yep. Right, so it makes it exceptionally hard to drop a hatch, and it just basically comes down to 50-50. And the last thing you want to do is put all your eggs in that one basket, because mm. you're just going to get mowed down if you get. Because they knew they knew where you were because of the thermite charge, mm -hmm. but you don't know where they are, so they could they could be sitting yeah. anywhere there, and you need really the right direction if you're going to get those uh if you're going to get those trades when you drop down a hatch. All right, um, just quickly though, do you reckon it dropping that hatch is just a silly idea overall? Because um. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but they were out of time. Yeah. They were, they were desperately running out of time. All right, now PD back on that dank Gavera is so far undiscovered, and that could be a bit of an oversight for Scylla if they don't fully check uh, check this spot. Yeah, but we do have a Jackal. So depending on how much he's silent stepped around, Jackal might be able to find them. Definitely. However, I believe if you're in silent step and they go to scan your footsteps, it doesn't count. Uh, no, so when you're in silent step, it doesn't show the footsteps, right? So if yep. you, um, yeah, so if even if he's in silent step and he finds some of the normal footprints out of Kavera, uh, it will still show his position. 
I are you sure about that? Because I swear I was playing Roma hunting with Wild Man, and he jackal scanned me while I was silent stepped, and he's like, uh, "It's not showing up." Oh really? So yeah, um, maybe. Maybe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test that now. Yeah. Someone in the chat, test it for us before this game ends. I'm sure everyone else wants to know as well. <laughs> now. Jackal and Kavira strats right now. We do have Scrimmy coming in up top uh, on that Montagna, and I'm not sure if we have any defenders left up here. Rock's got himself a nice cheeky angle, but yeah, no one from the defensive side is on this top floor. Yeah, so it does look like they've given it up. That being said, I expect PD to sort of roam back around up there uh, with how much room and space he's going to have to play with. Yep, there's three staircases he can take, and, you know, you've only got five players all going to be doing something. But Rizraz is taking down Fnatic. That is the first kill of this round going to Sala. Scylla. Squid. Let's go with Squid. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hope to Squid. Alright, and King's trying to get some of these Kavera footprints and very close to each other. We might see an interrogation here. I if we do. There we go. Yep. King's is uh, probably done goofed here. <laughs> yep, so that is that that is a lot of information given over to uh, Corviday. Um, and you just saw, as soon as the interrogation went out from both teams, as soon as the call went out from both teams, you saw uh, Silla try to stop the interrogation. They did try to come over it, obviously. And you saw Corbidae all change their positions to get aggressive. Um, nothing actually came of it, though, but they did reinforce a roundabout where everyone... 15 seconds to go. PD's taken down another one. He's using impact grenades to down the Montagna. And uh, there we go. That's the final kill. <laughs> with, with the impact grenade, I thought he was going to go for the interrogation there, but Velocity stops it in its tracks. It was a very fast and furious ending to that round, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But that is, uh, <laughs> interrogation. That is the, uh, that is the fate of an interrogation. As soon as you, the, because the whole benefit of it is obviously information, and it is one of, I, I believe it is the most overpowered ability in the game. And it makes Kavira the most overpowered operator. The only thing that hinders it is the fact it's, very high risk as well to go for it. I suppose so, what I want, what I would say is it's easy to counter. Would you say? Um, it's it's exceptionally easy to counter. All you have to do is kill, right? Yeah. Um, and she does need to be in melee range, and it's a five second animation. Seconds Attack if you kill her. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the interrogation. Or you can team kill the person who's on the floor. <laughs> the, not that's as fun option. <laughs> it's, I didn't say it's ideal, but hey, it's an option. <laughs> but now we don't see a Kibira coming out of Scylla this time. No, more opting for what that bandit. bandit? Yeah. And they're asking for a re-host. I'm not sure why, but I think um, we saw Astos just burn two impact grenades. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I didn't quite see where they went. <laughs> Astos's game is broken, apparently. Okay. His hacks uh, turned off. <laughs> <laughs> Need to get those, uh, the Corvid A red boxes going. <laughs> you can download them at www.dillyhacks.com. Dilly hacks, huh? Yep. I thought to be a hack, you had to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Dilly. We love you. <laughs> on on the note of okay, saying we love sorry. Dilly. Gilbert has just said in chat, if you were Cav and you get trapped, you literally just have to activate Silent Step and it will stop getting trapped. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Dilbert. That is uh, good information to know. And we do have an answer to our uh, puzzling question. But yeah, shout out to Dilly and also as a request of Cadavay. Shout out to Cadavay, he's the uh, manager for the CSGO Cor uh, Corvid A team. Moore has taken down Lusty, however, and we're going to see PD taken out through the floor there and finished off. Scrivy getting himself another frag. That's a 5 2 advantage. Sorry, 5. Well, now it's 5 2 advantage. Man advantage 5. And that's. Wow. Corvid A just folded right there. Four of them getting picked up. Now it's just left to Fnatic. The clutch master left in a 1v5. Do you reckon he can do it? 
Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna put my money on it. I think, I think Fnatic can do it. We've seen Fnatic pull tight, pull these clutches time and time again. I don't see any reason why he can't add a fifth one onto it. We've seen him 4K. We've seen him 3K. We get to see him 5K. Today is the day. And like, he does have time on his side. His side. He, he has um a whole minute to do stuff with. Yeah, so he's, he's definitely got some time here. But that being said, that time is going to become more critical the more he wastes. Mm -hmm. So he needs to he needs to be efficient with his time. He can't waste it. Um, as he still does have five people to find, which means he needs to kill one person now every 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. As we're down to 50 seconds. Or he could get that plant down, and that will increase his time. However, he is ripped now. Yeah, there he <laughs> Shot in the back. Puts himself right in the middle of crossfire there. He had to have expected that. And, uh, whoa. What an angle. There we yeah, go. Yeah, he, he would have had to have expected that, surely. He... Uh, just, he just sort of went for it, I think. Just Astos' key bindings. <laughs> <laughs> He's a complete potato. <laughs> Rip them, then. <laughs> but yeah, he was just throwing um, impact grenades instead of putting up castle barricades. <laughs> Alright, so, we're going to see PD picking up that Caveira once again, and might I just point out, we've only seen defense wins, no attack wins. Yes, uh, absolute, absolute opposite to what we saw in Border now. Um, currently 2-2 two, two, though, so this, um, still are putting up quite a fight here. And I think they, knowing that this is Corvidae's most trusted map, um, I do believe that they can be feeling pretty proud of themselves right now. Definitely. They do say this is one of those um, CT sided maps. Uh, <laughs> no, T sided maps. <laughs> it's the defense side. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not CSGO. I'm right. trying to make jokes, but that was pretty lame. <laughs> All right. So, about to go into the next defense round on this basement. What do you reckon would be the best way for. Um, Solid to attack this. Like, what, what would be your ideal I'm, strat? I'm personally um, a massive fan of the mod in uh, down through tunnel. Right. So, um, a lot of people don't like this because it can easily be dealt with. But now with the additions of claymores, you can counter it again really, really well. As Dilly is now coming for you, by the way, Monty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, sorry. Did you did you say Monty? Because yeah, you cut yeah, out. A yeah. Monty push. Yep. Yeah, a Monty push. So, um, a Monty push, you, can, you thermite the wall. Oh! oh, oh. Wild so, Wild, the wall. Wild took down Rizraz, but Mort's traded back on a PD. Now, where exactly is Wild? I'm not sure. Okay, he's in the lobby. But yeah, he, sorry. He ran away. <laughs> sorry, yeah, carry so, on. Yeah, you thermite out the, um, the right side wall, which is next to that desk, and you can actually walk in uh, backwards and plant the diffuser backwards so the diffuser actually sticks out or the outside of the bomb site. Yep, that's um, a common thing. It, yeah, and it means you can't be seen unless they walk into the door frame, which your Monty will then be blocking. Right, so then you only need to worry about is the hatch above you, which you should have control of at this point, and then again, your flank. So you need to take control of the upstairs section um, at the skylight there, uh, the ground floor, sorry, section of the skylight, and it's just your free plant. All right, so we have seen it slow down a bit. We've got Silo all running around on the top floor. God knows why. Well, except for Kings. Well, they're getting their hatches with the Habanas and... Very Rome heavy, Matthew. That was a massive lag spike for me. Alright. And Gooey Head further explaining the uh, Jackal Caveira conundrum. If you're a Jackal and scans footsteps, it turns out to be Caveira. She can count them by going just before the tag goes off. In a one shot position, and then she can go out of silent step. She just needs to go silent step every time before Jackal pins. Oh, Kings with a nice frag there onto Rock, and he's made his way down into this uh, server room area. 4v3, and we're going to see a th the thermite charge used up on the wall. Now, that was smoke that was taken down, so they've got no real chance of denying this one. However, we do have Wild up above and behind. 
Yes, so Wildman could potentially be very devastating to uh, Silla's attack here, as he does see one. Potatoes oh. a bit, and giving away his position. I'm just going to try and rotate over it to have a different angle on it. Astos will be going for the plant, however, in that spot you spoke about. However, he is going to get tagged up, and the plant's going to be denied. However, that's replied back, and it's now all up to Scrivy, who has two to find, but no, Wildman gets that kill as well. And that's a uh, another defensive win. Yeah, just to make something different here. So that that is actually a beautiful angle from Wildman through the two hatches there, straight onto that plant spot. Um, mm. So it could be, yeah, it, it that, that was a beautiful, beautiful flank from Wildman. I, he definitely uh, did some work there after he potatoed Scribby. <laughs> yes. Lusty asking, why am I blind when I'm in the smoke? It doesn't make sense. Hmm. I don't know. I think if I was in, uh, if you're in a thick cloud of smoke, I don't think you'd be able to see much. <laughs> Very well, yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, you don't have thermal goggles there. Um, need to so, you know, you're not glass. <laughs> One thing I like about our scene is we get good banter between teams. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Mort, uh, switching on his, um, silent step. You know, now that we're seeing a lot of Kaveira play, does that increase your running speed, do you know? No, it doesn't. Uh, it, it leaves it the same. But it stops your noise, and it, more important, doesn't leave a footprint behind. Oh, so you reckon maybe that's why he's silent stepping everywhere? Because he's expecting a jackal. Well, not expecting it, but preparing for it. Well, he is correct as they do have a jackal. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb. As um, the other thing it does as well is if they have a drone. Near so um, you know that's another thing they can't they they don't know where you are if you drone direct line of sight on you. They've actually I see tail in the comments. They've actually been doing it since season one. I remember seeing that in season one that plant. Yeah. It was yeah, one of the very first things discovered about this map. But yeah, yeah so, it, a yeah, lot of teams don't common, know about it. It's very common, very old, um, very old plant, but it does, it works wonders. So Rizraz is playing very aggressively on this door here. He could do some damage if uh, they're not careful. He hears the rappel go out, but he's just going to stay still. And yeah, Fnatic... This is the right call. There we go. He's been droned. Fnatic drones him out, yeah. He can't go back downstairs and barricade. He's quick about it though. <laughs> Having a bit of difficulty with his barbed wire. Oh. oh. Unfortunate. From upstairs. Yep. That's why he, he shouldn't have gone for that reinforcement mistake. So Mort's going to take down Lusty and Rizraz saying, I choked. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we noticed. It looks like we're going to be seeing shotgun on these stairs hold now. It's very hard to get a shotgun out of here. It's something we see a lot out of Xbox. Yes. Um, well, not having really looked at much of the Xbox thing. Um, I know Xbox does prefer shotguns a lot more than rifles that you see on PC a lot. However, just a quick nade can deal with it. So, um, dodging those flashbangs very nicely. Mm -hmm. However, Mort has been tagged up quite a lot, and his shotgun is not going to do much damage at that range. And there we go, grenade, he is rip, and uh, on the floor. Yeah, yeah so one, one well-timed grenade will deal with uh, that defense. They just have to call, uh, call one across. 50 right. seconds now, and we do see one smoke get used out of... Uh, so all three smokes have been used so, from Scrooby. Yep, and uh, there is the man advantage for the attackers, and he's been down, so that's gonna, just going to be another man advantage. Kings has got that long angle we spoke about last time. He sees Rock, but can't react in time, um, and it's up to 2v4, and we may be seeing our first attack win. It definitely looks like that, and that would be devastating for Silk. They've done, pardon me, they've done so well so far. They can't go ahead and lose this defensive round now. Definitely. Now, PD's just watching this hatch, trying to get anyone who's going to push in to try and deny any plant. Remaining. Throwing out a few flashbang grenades, blinds himself. Wildman is taking down Astos, so it's up to Kings. 
um, to deny this plant. However, the plant is going to go through. Wildman's going to see him. He can't react in time. And uh, he's just going to run away. <laughs> Probably the right move. Um, trying to stand and fight against Wildman is not the greatest idea. Uh, <laughs> he, is he is putting himself, as he dodges bullets left and right, he is putting himself, he's in a corner now, right? Like, he can't, he can't go any more backwards. He's in a corner now. Oh, nice shot. So he's taking out one, he's taking out another. This is a 1v2. Very low HP, and he knows one's above, and there we go. PD gets that kill on him. That is the first attack round we've seen one. Yeah, and so that now puts the advantage square with uh, Corvide. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's now 4-2. 4-2. So yeah, match so point. They, they're on match point now, so they only need to win this last defensive round. And uh, this will be the uh, this will be the match. Catavase, in my defense, it says that on the um, Corvide page that you are the CSGO team manager. <laughs> so don't try and correct me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did see that as well when I first uh, Googled Corvide. Uh, when they first picked up the team, and I saw, yeah, Catavase was the uh, the CSGO manager. I so thought that was odd, considering he was, you know, pro in the Siege community at the time. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, that's just saying, uh, I suppose that just shows the difference between the Siege and CSGO community. Like, there's, CSGO is a much bigger esport compared to Siege, okay. and like, you know, pretty much your average Joe can be in a competitive team in um, the ANZ Siege scene, I suppose. Yeah, not a not a good team by any means, but yeah, any any group of five can join, can join our CG ladders and even even our ESL ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, but the more you play at that sort of level, the yeah. So it's not the worst idea, even if you like. When we first joined, um, when I first joined in competitive, um, it was you know it was rough for us because we were versing a lot of these good teams, but we all benefited from it. We all got better as players. Well, I suppose the one thing I would recommend if you want to join, a, if you're, like, you're interested in playing competitively, is just get five and just play a game. You don't have to worry about strats or anything to start off with. Just like get that feel for playing competitively, I suppose. Yeah. And play a lot of ranked, uh, because ranked and the competitive scene are much more uh, linked now than what they used to be. Definitely. So we are seeing uh, Scylla uh, push up onto this um, roof here. And if they want to take this round, they're going to have to do something that, you know, they haven't managed to do yet and win an attack round if they want to stay in this game. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, pretty, at this point, I think it's a pretty tall order. Even you saw the last game, um, Corviday went in a very strong position to, uh, oh crap, this could actually be dangerous um, position relatively quickly. So um, I don't know if... Uh, it is going to ask for a tall order because it asked for a tall order. That being said, they are attacking the less favoured bomb site, and Lusty has been taken low up top already. So, well, probably about two thirds of his health is gone, and there we go. He's finished down by Mort with a wall bang. Easy does it. Yep. Gonna want those moss flowers. <laughs> Although Mort is tagged up through the floor by Rock, who's playing uh, in the uh, mini office on the side. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is the manager's office downstairs. Yeah, there we go. Man